Hi guys, this is Mrs. Hunt, and today we are going to do transforming quadratic functions. If you remember from last class, we uh, graphed our quadratics in both standard form and vertex form. Today we are going to just be looking at our quadratic functions that are in vertex form. So if you remember, our vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Okay, so it says identify the vertex and graph the function, graph the parent function and describe the transformation. So this first one is y equals x squared. If you remember from last class, that is called our parent function. Why it is our parent function is because it is the most basic quadratic function. You have to have an x squared term in your equation to be considered a quadrat, or sorry, to be considered, yes, a quadratic function. So y equals x squared is your quadratic parent function. So to find your vertex, remember it's h, k. h is found in the equation in the parentheses with x, and k is the constant out to the side. Well, we don't have parentheses here, so I don't have an h value, so my h value is zero. I don't have a plus number, I don't have a constant out to the side, so my k value is also zero. So my vertex is zero, zero. And again, if you remember from last class, we always put the vertex in the middle of our table. Your vertex is the most important point on your quadratic. You always have to have it graphed. So then I'm going to choose a point one larger than zero and I'm going to find the y value. So y equals one squared. So I'm just using my equation to then find the corresponding y value when x is one. So one squared is just one. So when y is one, sorry, when x is one, y is also one. Now I'm going to find the y value when x is 2. Well, 2 squared is just 4. Now, if you remember from last class, we have an axis of symmetry, a line of symmetry. All of your points have a partner, has a pair, other than your most important point, which is your vertex. So let's plot these three points on our graph. 0, 0, which is the origin. 1, 1, and then 2, 4. Now, if you remember from last class, again, your axis of symmetry is the line that goes, it's a vertical line, that goes through the vertex. We normally graph this using a dashed line because it's not actually part of our graph. It just helps us graph our function. So this point needs to be reflected over the axis of symmetry. So it's one away, so I'm going to go one away to the left. This one is two away, so I'm going to go two away to the left. And there is my quadratic parent function. Remember, your quadratic makes a U-shape, not a V-shape, so make sure it's curly. It doesn't stop at these two points, so we need to extend it through the graph and put arrows at the end of it, just like we did when we did our linear functions. So now let's fill out the rest of the table with what these two points are that we just reflected. So this is negative 1, 1, and this is negative 2, 4. So there are my five points. Okay. So now we're going to graph the new function. This one's not our parent function because it's not just y equals x squared. You now have this minus 2 in the parentheses with the x. So I think it's sometimes helpful to rewrite the formula for your uh, vertex form of your quadratic right above it. Okay. So the number in the parentheses with x, that's your h. And remember, anything in the parentheses you take the opposite of, because it says minus h, which means the opposite of h. So the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. And then my k, I don't have a plus number out to the side, so it's 0. I don't have a constant out to the side. 
So remember your vertex goes in the middle, so two, zero. And we wanna pick a number one bigger than two, so I'm gonna choose three. So y equals three minus two squared. So three minus two is one, one squared is one. So three, one. And then y equals, and I'm gonna choose four, because we're just going one larger each time. So four minus two squared, four minus two is two, squared is four. So four, four. So let's plot those points. Two, zero, three, one, four, four. And again, we have our axis of symmetry that goes through the vertex. I can draw that on here. So this one is one away, so it's gonna go one away to the left. This one's two away from the axis of symmetry, so I'm gonna go two away to the left. And draw your parabola. Again, arrows at the end. So this point is one, one. And this point is zero, four. Remember, when we graph our quadratics, we want to make sure that our table, just like our graph, has symmetry. The y value on the top and bottom should match when you go in. Those two y values should also match. And then there's your vertex. Your vertex doesn't have a matching one. That's the lone point all by itself, the most important point of your quadratic. Okay, so we are now going to look at these two quadratics, these two parabolas, and see. How did I get from the pink one, my parent function, to the blue one, my new function? Well, if you look at the vertex, the vertex went one, two to the right. We're not gonna use the word went two to the right or move to, the word we're gonna use is we're gonna say shift right two. Okay, we're gonna say two units. So shift right two units. Well, looking at your equations, what changed? Here, I have an h value of two. Here, I don't have an h value. That's the only thing that changed. So what's gonna shift you right or left is gonna be the h value. So this is an h value change. And remember, the h value is just your x value of your vertex, okay? So if your h changes, you're gonna shift right or left, okay? My h went from zero to positive two, so that's why I shifted right two. If you get a smaller h value, let's say my h was negative two, I would have shifted left two, okay? So that's how your h affects your graph. Now we're going to look at different ones. If you notice, on these, we already have the parent function graphed. So again, this is my parent function, because we are going to compare all of these to my parent function. So we already have the parent function graphed over here. And again, I like to put y equals a times x minus h squared plus, ah, I'm about to put eight, plus k, okay? So that is your vertex form of your quadratic. So your h or your x value of your vertex is in the parentheses with x, but you don't have parentheses, so my h value is zero. My k is my constant out to the side. My constant out to the side is a negative eight. So my vertex is at zero, negative eight. Always put your vertex in the middle of your table. So then I'm gonna try one and two. So let's do y equals one squared minus eight. One squared is one minus eight is negative seven. And then let's do two. So y equals two squared minus eight. 2 squared is 4, minus 8 is negative 4. So let's plot those points. 0, negative 8, 1, negative 7, and 2, negative 4. And again, you can put your axis of symmetry, which this time your axis of symmetry is just right on top of the y-axis. 
and we're going to reflect those points over our axis of symmetry. This one is one away from the axis of symmetry, so I go one to the left. This one's two away, so I go two to the left. So this point would be negative one, negative seven. And then negative two, negative four. Again, check and make sure that your table has symmetry. The top and bottom y values match, go in. Those y values should match. And then my vertex is being sandwiched by pairs of y values. Okay, so now let's compare these two graphs. Oh, let's draw our parabola first. Again, notice how I extended my parabola all the way through the graph, and I put errors at the end. Okay, so how does this graph, our parent function, compare to my new graph, my blue graph? The parent function went down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. So we're going to use that same word, shift, shift down eight units. Now, looking at your equations, what changed? My h values were both still 0, but my k value went from a 0 to a negative 8. So when your k changes, that's what's going to shift you up and down. So this is a k value change. So the reason we shifted down and not up is my k went from 0 to negative 8. Negative is going to shift me down. A positive is going to shift me up. Okay, so your H shifts you right and left. Your K shifts you up and down. Okay, so again, my parent function is already written out for me and graphed for me. Okay, so now let's do my new one. So we have y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So your h is the number in the parentheses with x. You don't have a number in the parentheses with x, so it's 0. k is the constant out to the side. You don't have a plus number or minus number out to the side. You don't have a constant, so it's 0. So my vertex is at 0, 0. Okay, so now we want to figure out two more points. So we're going to try one and two. So y equals two times one squared. One squared is one times two is two. And then y equals two times two squared equals two squared is four. Four times two is eight. So then we have two, eight. So one, or zero, zero, one, two, and two, eight. Again, draw your axis of symmetry down the middle. And we're gonna reflect. This one's one away from the axis of symmetry, so reflect it. This one's two away, so it's two away on the other side. And draw your parabola. Okay, so this point's negative 1, 2, and that point is negative 2, 8. Again, my table shows symmetry, so we're good. Okay, so what happened to this graph? My blue one and my black one, my parent function, they both have a vertex at the origin at 0, 0. Notice they both have the same vertex. So we didn't shift right or left because my h value and my k value didn't change. However, my blue one's inside the black one, meaning it's skinnier, it's narrower. Okay, the phrase we're going to use for this, you could say narrower, you could say, um, the w phrase we're going to use though is it's vertically stretched. If you're vertically stretching it, you're making it skinnier or narrower. So we're going to say vertically stretch. By two. And the reason I know it's by two, 
Let's look at our equations. What changed? Here we don't have a coefficient of x squared. Here we have a 2 as our coefficient of x squared. So if I take all of these y values, 4 times 2 is 8, 1 times 2 is 2, 0 times 2 is 0, 1 times 2 is 2, and 4 times 2 is 8. So we just changed all of our y values by a factor of 2. And what caused that is an a value change. Remember, your a is the coefficient of the x squared. Okay? So now we are going to do our last one and see how this changes it. So we have our parent function already graphed. And then now let's do our other one. So this is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. That's your vertex form of your quadratic. Your h is in the parentheses, but we don't have parentheses, so it's 0. Your k is the constant out to the side, which we don't have, which is 0. So 0, 0 is my vertex. So now we need to find other points. So I'm going to do 1 and 2. So y equals negative 1 squared. Now be careful. This means that you're doing 1 squared and then multiplying it by a negative. So 1 squared is 1 times a negative is negative 1. And then y equals negative 2 squared. That means you're doing 2 squared, which is 4, and then a negative, which gives you a negative 4. Okay, so 0, 0, we have the same vertex, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 4. Draw your axis of symmetry. Remember, your axis of symmetry is a dashed vertical line through the origin. And then we're going to reflect this one's 1 away. So go 1 away that way. This one's 2 away from the axis of symmetry, so I'm going to reflect 2 away. So this point is negative 1, negative 1, and this point is negative 2, negative 4. So again, make sure your table shows symmetry. Negative 4, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1, 0. And there's my vertex. So if you look at this graph, the tables look super similar. The only difference is instead of now opening up, we open down, okay? So the way that we're going to say that is we say reflect over the this axis, and that's the x-axis, so reflect over the x-axis. Now comparing your equations, the only thing that changed is this is a positive x squared, this is a negative x squared. So that negative, that's your a, so we say you have an A sign change. Because the value didn't change, just the sign of it. It went from a positive one to a negative one. Okay? So we talked about four different changes, four different transformations. Okay? And they are all here on the table. The first one we talked about was our H value change. So H is going to shift you left or right. If H gets big, you go right. If H gets small, you go left. So small and big. Okay, then the second one that we talked about was the K value change. That's the Y value of your vertex. That shifts you up and down. You're gonna go up if you get bigger. You're gonna go down if you get smaller. Now, the A is what we sometimes struggle with because your A affects it two different ways. We said that the A value change vertically stretched me, which the opposite of that would be a vertical compression or a vertical shrink, okay? And then we also said that the A value, the sign changing, reflected over the x-axis. So your A, you have to look at it as two different pieces. So that's what these little bars are around the A. If your absolute value, which just turns all of your numbers positive, absolute value is the distance from zero, so it just turns all your numbers positive. 
So if A is in between 0 and 1, you're a vertical shrink, which we also say compression. Okay. So if A gets small, then you are vertically compressing. If A is bigger than 1, and again, we're looking at the absolute value of A, then you are vertically stretching. Then we're going to look at the sine of A. If A is negative, then you reflect over the x-axis. Okay? So now that we know how these four things change our graphs, we are going to look at graphs and describe the transformations using our proper vocabulary that we have outlined here on this table. Okay? So I'm going to keep this table here so we can kind of still look at it as we compare these graphs. So it says identify the transformations from the parent function to the new quadratic function. Okay, so this one is my parent function. So, you can do these in any order. The first thing I would do is look at my parent function's vertex. The first one we did was shifting right and left. So, does the vertex from this one to this one, does it shift right or left? Well, you move right one. So, we're going to say shift right one. From here to here, I have to shift right one. So that's where my new vertex would be, but we're not done because that's not where the vertex is. So now I need to shift up and one, two, three, four, shift up four. Okay. So now we have the vertex in the right spot, but this graph is opening upward. This graph is opening downward. So we have to also say that we reflect over the x axis. Okay? And then our fourth transformation is to see if we got narrower or wider, if we vertically compressed or vertically stretched. I think the easiest way to do this is let's find two more points on our graph, okay? So I have my vertex here, and then I have my two points there. I have my vertex and then the next two points. Okay, so from my vertex, I went right one, up one to get to the next point. From here, I go over one, down one. So does it have the same ratio of over one, down one? over one, up one. Yes, you're going different directions, but is it the same ratio of over and then up? It does, so that means we didn't get narrower or wider. We didn't vertically compress or vertically stretch. Okay, so there's a total of four possible transformations. This one has three. Okay, sometimes there's gonna be one difference. Sometimes there's gonna be two, sometimes three, sometimes four, okay? You want to check and make sure that you go through and check and see if there are four transformations, but there won't always be four. Okay, let's go to our next one. Again, I like to look at my vertex. My vertex is right there. Well, I need to go one, two to the left. So I'm going to say shift left two. Well, after I shift left two, am I at the vertex of my new graph? No, so I now need to go one, two, three down. So shift down three. Okay, now if you look, look how fat this one looks. That's my parent function. And then now look how skinny this one looks. That means we vertically stretched. So we can say vertically stretch. Okay, again, like we did on the last one, 
you can look, here's my vertex, here's the next point. Here's my vertex, here's the next point. Here I went right one, up one. Here I go right one, up one, two, three, four. I'm going up a lot more. I'm vertically stretching. Then the last one to look is to see if we reflected. Are we both opening up? Yep, both the parabolas are opening up, so we did not reflect. Okay, so that one had three transformations. Okay, now looking at this last one again, here is my parent function and here is my new one. So let's start at our vertex of our parent function. Did we shift right or left at all to get up to the new vertex? We don't, they're right on top of each other. So I'm not gonna say shift right or left. However, there's my original vertex and I need to one, two, three, four, five. I need to shift up five units. Well, now I'm at the new vertex, so I'm done shifting. This one's opening up. My parent function always opens up because your A value is positive. This one's opening down, which means your A value is negative. So we say reflect over the x-axis. Okay. Then we need to see if we got narrower or wider, vertically compressed or shrunk or vertically stretched. So again, here's my vertex, here's a point, here's my vertex, here's a point. So I go over one, up one, over one, down one. So they have the same ratio. So we are good. We did not vertically stretch or vertically compress. So that's how you just look at two graphs and compare the differences. Describe the transformations. Now we're going to move on to two equations and determine the transformations. Okay? And I'm going to keep this table here so we can keep referring back to it. So we are describing the transformation from f of x equals x squared to g of x equals 1 half f sorry, one half f of x plus three, okay? So what this means, first of all, this is my parent function because f of x equals x squared, that's your parent function. So what we're gonna do is we are going to list out our absolute value of a, and this is gonna be for our parent function. Our absolute value of a, and then we're gonna list out our sine of a, we're going to list out our h value, and we're going to list out our k value. And then we're going to list out our new absolute value of a, our new a sine, our new h value, and our new k value. So looking here, a is 1. Your a sine is positive. There's no number in the parentheses with x, so h is 0. There's no constant out to the side, so k is also 0. These are going to be your starting values if you're starting at the parent function. These are always going to be your starting values if you're starting at the parent function. Okay, so now we're going to list out our new a value. So this is now my new. Remember, your a is your coefficient of x squared. Well, this looks kind of confusing because I don't have an x squared here. So this one half f of x, that f of x just means I can substitute f of x in with x squared. So this really says one half x squared, and we can even write that. G of x, this really means one half x squared plus three. All it's saying is I'm taking my f of x function and I'm doing these two transformations to it. Okay, so my coefficient of x squared is now 1 half. My a sine is still positive. My h value is the number in the parentheses with x, which I don't have, so my h value is still 0. And k is the constant out to the side, which this time is 3. Okay, so these are my starting values from my parent function. These are my new values from my new g of x function. So we're only going to describe what changed, because if you have a change, that's when your graph is transforming. So my a value did change. 
So when A gets small, you are vertically compressing. See how it went from one to one half. So it falls in this category. It's in between zero and one. So that's a vertical compression. So we're going to say vertical compression. My A sign didn't change, so I don't reflect. My H value didn't change, so I did not shift right or left. And my K value did change. From 0 to 3, K gets bigger. So if we get bigger, we shift up. So I'm going to say shift up 3. Because it went from 0 to 3. So this then is my answer. We vertically compressed, and we shifted up 3. Okay, it's very important to list out your original and list out your new important values so you can compare the two and see what changed to then describe the transformation. Okay, let's go to the next one. Again, we're starting at our parent function. So I know my value of A is 1. My sine of A is positive. My H value is 0 and my k value is also 0. Okay, so now my new one. Again, when we list our a value, we're not looking at the sign. So I'm not going to say my a value is now negative 1 fourth. I'm just going to look at the number, the value, which is 1 fourth. Then we're going to say the sign of a is negative. Remember, H is the number inside the parentheses, and we always take the opposite of anything inside the parentheses. So I see a negative 2, which means my new H is a positive 2. I don't have a plus or minus number out to the side, so my K is still 0. So we're going to identify what changed. So I went from A value being 1 to 4. So if you get small, you're compressing. So this is a vertical compression. My A sign also changed. So this is a reflect over the X axis. Your H also changed, which H shifts you right or left. If we get bigger, 0 to 2, you get bigger. So we're shifting right. You're shifting right 2. And K didn't change, so we did not shift up or down. So there are three transformations. Okay. And then last one of these. So again, we're starting at our parent function. So my A value is 1. My A sign is positive. My H value is 0, and my K value is also 0. So my new A value is 4. My A sign, since it's a positive 4, it's still positive. H is the number in the parentheses with X, which I don't have, so it's just 0. And then K is the constant out to the side, so that's negative 7. So let's describe what changed. So this time my A value got larger, so that falls in this category. The absolute value of A gets bigger, which means we vertically stretch. Vertical stretch. The A value, or sorry, the A sign didn't change, so we didn't reflect. My H value didn't change, so we didn't shift right or left. My K value changed, and it went from 0 to negative 7, so it got smaller. So when it's smaller, we shift down. So shift down 7. We're not going to say negative 7 because the negative is already implied with the word down. Okay. So those are my two changes. Those are my two transformations because I only had two of my values change. Okay. Now we are going to go on to writing equations, writing a new equation. We're going to follow the same exact process, 
okay? We're not necessarily going to start at the parent function every time, but we're still going to list out our A value, our A sign, our H value, and our K value. And then we're going to do whatever transformation it tells us to do, okay? So looking at my first function, my A value, which is your x squared coefficient, is 2. Okay, my A sign, it's a positive 2, so A is positive. My H value is the number in the parentheses, but I don't even have parentheses, so H is 0. And then K is the constant out to the side, which is the Y value of your vertex, which in this case is 4. So those are my starting values, okay? Now let's read what it tells us or how it tells us to transform it. So it's saying it's transformed by reflecting over the x-axis. Well, to reflect over the x-axis, that means we need to change the a sign, okay? So instead of a being positive, my new a is going to now be negative because we're reflecting. Then it's going to be narrower, which narrower is a vertical stretch, okay, by a factor of three. When it says by a factor of three, that means you're multiplying by three. So two times three is six. Does it tell us to make any other changes? It's just those two. So we're still going to leave our H is zero and our K is four. So what I'm going to do is I like to write out my vertex form of my quadratic so it's easy for me to see where I'm going to substitute values in. So y equals, what's my new a? My new a is a negative 6. Negative 6. Then times x minus h, which my h is still 0, squared plus k, which k is still 4. Now, that's not wrong. However, you're not going to see that minus 0. And if I don't have a minus 0, I don't even need the parentheses. So really, the correct simplified form of this would just be negative 6. Since you don't need the minus 0, you don't need the parentheses. So just negative 6x squared plus 4. Again, this one wouldn't be wrong, but again, you don't need the minus zero, so this is what you would see more commonly. So there's my new equation. If we change this one by reflecting it, and that we know we're reflected, because now my a is negative instead of positive, reflecting over the x-axis, and again, narrower is the same as a vertical stretch, because if you're getting narrow, you're getting taller, okay? So let's look at this next one. This time we are comparing it to our parent function, because remember y equals x squared, that's just your parent function. So my a value is one, my a sign is positive, my h value is zero, and my k value is also zero. Okay, so it tells us to shift left 7. So what makes me go left? The h value. And if you think on a graph, going to the left, that's negative. So it's now going to be a negative 7. And it's going to be wider. Wider is the same as saying a vertical compression. It's wider by a factor of a third. So that's affecting your a. By a factor, remember, means multiply. So 1 times a third is now 1 third. Those are the only two transformations. So I'm done changing my values. A is still going to be a positive. K is still going to be 0. So again, let's write our vertex form of a quadratic. Y equals A times X minus H squared plus K. And then we're going to substitute in our new values. Y equals A is a positive one-third. So I don't have to put the positive, but I'm just going to put one-third. And then x minus h is a negative seven. So minus a negative seven. Squared plus k, which k is zero. Okay, so let's simplify this. So we get y equals one-third 
I do need the parentheses here because there's a number in the parentheses, but what do I do with my double negatives? That just becomes a positive 7. Minus negative becomes a plus. So plus 7 parentheses squared. Do I need to include a plus 0? You don't. So that is it. And we are done. So there is my new equation. Okay, we're almost done, guys. One last one. Then we're done for today. So this time we're not starting at our parent function. Let's list out our values. A is your coefficient of x squared, or the parentheses. There's no coefficient there, so you have an understood coefficient of 1. There's not a negative there, so my A is positive. My H is the number in the parentheses with x. And remember, you always take the opposite because it's minus H, which means the opposite of H. So positive 2 means my H is a negative 2. And then your k is your constant out to the side, which I don't have a plus number, so this is 0. Okay, so those are my starting values. And it says I'm going to shift down 5. So down, that's your k value. And if I go down, that means I'm getting smaller. So minus 5. So 0 minus 5 is negative 5. And then we're going to go left 2. Okay, left is my h. And again, on a graph, if you go to the left, that means your x values are getting negative. So we're going to subtract 2. So negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Notice how it doesn't say anything else. So those are the only two changes we're making. We're shifting down and shifting left. So same thing, let's write our vertex form of our quadratic. And then we're going to substitute in our new values. So y equals, I don't need to put a positive 1 out in front of the parentheses because it's understood to be a positive 1 if there's no coefficient. So x minus h is negative 4 squared plus k is negative 5. So we do need to do a little bit more simplifying. So y equals x. What happens to my double negatives? It becomes a positive. So x plus 4 squared. And then a positive negative just becomes a negative. So then a minus 5. Minus 5. So there is my new equation that's transformed by shifting down 5 and left 2. I hope that y'all enjoyed this lesson and please reach out to us if you have any questions. Have a great day.